A halting walk and a leg which is still in pain. Reminders of the torture Bezard says he endured in an Iranian prison. His crime demonstrating against the election of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in 2009. He was behind bars for more than four months. These photos were taken soon after he was released when he came to Turkey. After a while, I confessed everything. I couldn't do anything else. They wanted to get confessions about my father, that he had links with America and Israel, and they forced me to do it. He's not the only Iranian refugee in Turkey, a country which doesn't require visas from Iran. According to the United Nations, there are some 4,000 others. But life here isn't easy for these Iranians. Unless they can somehow negotiate a work permit, they're forced to live on the margins of Turkish society. It's impossible. I went to the UN and I'm waiting to hear back. And I have to go in and sign with the police station every day. So right now, it's just impossible. They're all hoping for the golden ticket out of this bureaucratic maze, political refugee status from the UN. That provides for a transfer to a more welcoming host country. Ali has just arrived here to receive his new official status. He'll be leaving for Norway in a few weeks. He was happy to speak out, but police insisted that he remain anonymous for safety reasons. Refugees say Iranian agents are active in Turkey, trying to stop witnesses from talking. Threats Ali says he experienced firsthand after a previous interview with foreign reporters. I left them after the interview. It was about midnight. Then in a deserted street I was threatened by three men, Iranians, who put a knife to my throat. They told me it would be my last interview. Then they left. But despite the risks, Ali is determined that people should know what's happening in Iran. It's a country he'll probably never see again for himself. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's regime has already condemned him to death.